Oh, praises to you. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Giving all praises to Yahweh <clears throat> And um, I'm going to entitle this uh, video. It'll be somewhat short. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the Most High. And that's from, uh, as you can see, Matthew 22, verse 29. And what I wanted to go into very briefly is, let me find, let me get the video up. Bear with me for a minute. Okay. Okay, YouTube. Okay, now I gotta find it. All right, vocab alone. I'm sorry, let me let me do this. Let me do it this way. Let me go to um, I just want to get a get a quote that he made. Just bear with me. I'm almost there. Um, I believe it's this one. You are going, you are going to get a spiritual foot up your ass sideways. I just want to find the part where he makes his quote. And say the other nations. Anyway, this is from some letter of Julio. And they, and they, they just put up uh, five months ago. So, one, uh, vocab along the apostles, which is just something we could do right here. There's a trinity, biblical, and paid up. And I want you to listen to. Uh, Infamous vocab balloon, and where, where what he has to say pretty much goes in on us. And he tries to or say, actually says it in that way, about the way, but he makes a statement that uh, the Israelites teach that the gospel or part of the gospel is that we can enslave people. Now, I did a video about an hour ago entitled When They Sell Tapes and Captives, Captives They Work. That's a future prop prophecy coming from uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2. Is that the part of the gospel? Yeah, absolutely. The Old Testament, the New Testament comes after the Old Testament. It, the New Testament is the fulfillment of a lot of the Old Testament well, in the captivity. So guess what? Now, but you don't have to. He, he believes and, and what prophecy came to the scripture. Like I said, I'm not going to make this long. I'm going to let it. Okay, here it is right, right, right there. I wanted to get right to this point. So listen, listen, listen. Oh, 
seeing different perspectives to the same accounts and the listening and the on top and the call. So it seems like a, a man who's really willing to dialogue and somebody who's counseling and listening and taking information. Other than that, I don't know a whole lot uh, about him. I just know that he's very consistent and uh, present and willing to talk. Okay, according to your understanding, okay, what is an Israelite? Do you consider a person, a historian, a Yahala? Because I remember you were talking about an Israelite and, you know, how you could be an Israelite. What makes you an Israelite? Do you see these brothers as Hebrew Israelites? Um, no, nobody According knows. to your understanding of your information, the most important way to be an Israelite, Sean Meta, and they don't like this, is spiritually. Galatians 3 7 says that if you have the faith of Abraham, then you're Abraham's seed or offspring. Galatians 3 29 says the exact same thing. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, yeah, we all know that that applies, the spiritual part applies to the physical uh, Israelites. Read Romans 9. I always go to Romans 9. So let's listen to a little bit more. Then I'm going to actually give you the, you know, the, the, the meaning of the word gospel. This is about the gospel because he makes a statement. Let's listen. Give me that scripture again. Galatians 3 7. Galatians 3 29. All right, Galatians 3 7. Galatians 3 29. Check this out. Both of those show you. So, how do you explain Romans chapter 9, the whole chapter? How do you explain it? who is the Apostle Paul uh, talking to? That's number Christian BS. But the most important way to be identified with the descendants of Abraham is spiritually by having the same faith. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing that most people have done. Most of them deny the, the doctrine. The actual good news, I don't know about gospel, I'm not actually saying I'm actually still learning about theology. Most of them deny the gospel. Yeah, so a lot of them don't what the gospel is, and they'll say it's we're going to be kicking the other nation's ass in the future. That's good. That would be good news. That's good news. When we actually do it, when we kicking the other nation's ass in the future. Yeah, so a lot of them don't know what the gospel is, and they'll say it's we're going to be kicking the other nation's ass in the future. That's that would be good news. That's good news. Uh, a lot of them don't know what the gospel is, and they'll say it's we're going to be kicking the other nation's ass in the future. That's good. That would be good news. It's the not the gospel. Yeah, so a lot of them don't know what the gospel is, and they'll say it's we're going to be kicking the other nation's ass in the future. That's good. Okay, so you heard it. So I'm not putting words in this guy's mouth. He said the mother guy is talking about. Guys like GM, GMS and ISUPK, IUIC, some of the major camps, um, they think that the gospel is kicking people in the ass in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Well, let's go to, what is this, Luke 4. Give me a second. Let me do this. Go to the blue letter. The blue letter. Blue letter. Yeah, I hadn't worked in like, this is my second week. I hadn't worked at all because of the gas prices. You don't, you simply don't make no money. At, I remember a year and a half, two years ago, $20 to get you $10 worth of gas. And uh, now it takes you over $50 to get the same $10 in gas. You don't make no money. Your, your money's ate up, eaten up by the, uh, the gas price. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just waiting until something changes. If you, if, um, uh, Uber raises the price. They will have to raise the prices, at least at least by fifty percent. 
you know, you you got to hustle what you made even even when I was two years ago. You got to you got to hustle, man. You know, but um, it's ridiculous. And I was watching another video of this truck, and I subscribed to him. Well, it's different people. They have this Jake woman on there. Sometimes you have Edomite on there, and they're basically saying the a lot of these truckers they're going to stop driving because of the gas prices unless their companies, you know, brokers give them dramatic raises. Because he was saying that this one truck he was next to, it, I don't know if it was, a, it said, he said over $1,000. I think, I think he said $1,800 to fill up his tank. Because some of those trucks have two tanks. To completely fill up your truck, I believe he said, I could be wrong. He said that his truck, he has one tank, and it costs him over, it's a over thousand dollars to fill up his tank. So you just can't, you know, you can't compete. You know, you 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 eat your money is going right into the gas. So it doesn't make make any sense. And if truckers don't drive, you don't get your your items, your food items, your clothes. You know, everything's gonna go up. And if you can find it, and then they're also saying that um. Uh, and at the end of this month, going into June, at the end of June, a lot of these companies that have been around for years are just going to close their doors. So it's going to make matters even worse. You know, this system is breaking down, and this, this system is breaking down all around the world. The prices are going up, all, not just inflation in this country, but all around the world. Uh, prices are going up. Uh, dramatically through inflation. We know what inflation is all about. If you don't know, check my videos. Go to my page and put in, um, type in hyperinflation in the search search engine for my videos. And you get an understanding of what the difference between inflation and hyperinflation is. And this is one of the main reasons why these prices are going up. But it's all playing out behind the scenes any damn way. Anyway, let me get back into my subject. So let's go to the word gospel. Gospel. And the gospel, the fulfillment of the gospel, gospel, gospel. Gospel is us kicking other nations in the ass. Number one on the list is Esau. And that's just a part of it. Not, we're just not, that's not the fulfillment of the gospel only. The gospel is us being on top. So now let's go to let's go to Luke 4 verse 18. Okay, it says here, right? Mark 16, verse 15. And and he said unto them, Go ye into the world. I bet you that word is cosmos. I'm not gonna go to it. And preach. And the word preach means the, the word when you break down the word preach, it means to prophesy prophesy the gospel to every creature. Now, does that, that, does that mean you got to go to roaches and dogs on the street and rabbits and cats and, and, and open up the scriptures and read? Because vocab ain't doing that. The creature is talking about a man and woman, but it's talking about a particular man and woman, an Israelite man and woman. That's why the Lord said what he said in uh, Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, neither in any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Don't go among them because the gospel is not for them. They're not for the Gentiles and they're not for the Samaritans. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the national Israel, the sons of Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's at hand. That's the gospel, the kingdom. And a lot of blessings will come to us in the kingdom. And one of them is us enslaving other nations. Now, let's, okay, let's read Luke 4, verse 18, right? It says, the spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The Romans in, in power were not, they were not brokenhearted. They were, they were on top to preach deliverance what what does it word what does the word deliverance mean? To deliver somebody. If somebody's in a car crash and they're stuck in the car 
and the, the fire department has used the jaws of life to open part of the damage the car, but to, to save the person, deliverance, that's, that's you being delivered. And the first thing you do, you're going to hug the firemen because they delivered you from death. To the captives, are the Romans the captives? Are the Yo European so-called white uh, Romans, are they captives? No, they were on top of you. They were the Caesars, they were the governors, they were the centurions. And recovering of sight to the blind. What does it mean recovering of the sight to the, blind and to the blind? The Lord did heal actual blind people, but in a bigger sense, it's talking about Israelites blind to who they are. That shows you that they lost their heritage. They lost the way to go. Why do you, going back to Matthews 10, 5, and 6, why did the Lord say, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? They were lost. So it was the, the, the job of the disciples, which became, which became apostles, to lead them the right way. The scriptures say, put not a stumbling block before the blind. So when you teach a foot like this guy, vocab alone, he's nothing but a major stumbling block. And all of you that stumble at what he says, bless on you. Bless on you, okay? It said, and receive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. The Romans ain't bruised. The Caesar at that time wasn't bruised. When, when, when our Lord came on the scene, it was during the time of uh, Augustus going into uh, Tiberius Caesar. When Joseph had to do the census in Matthew 2, I believe that was Tiberius, that was, was the, uh, it was either Augustus or Tiberius. I'm pretty sure it was Tiberius, uh, Caesar. So they wasn't bruised. They wasn't, you know, they didn't need to, they, their sight to be open. They, they, they looked, they're the Romans and they were ruling, right? So it said, uh, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, which are the Israelites. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance, the Romans didn't have to be delivered. To the captives, who's the captives? Let's, let's pull out a couple of words. And then where is our Lord reading from? He's reading from Isaiah 61. And Isaiah 61 speaks about captivity. And I'm going to look up the word gospel. Deliver, deliverance, deliverance to the captive, right? Strong's G, 164. So you just heard it. A captives, a captive. The Romans wasn't captive under us. We were captives under them. So it's not talking about any Roman citizen. Okay, it's only written, the word captive here is only written uh, G1, what is that? 164, one time, that's uh, Luke 4, verse 18. So now let's come back. So in essence, the Lord was saying, I'm here to free you from, from your captives. Who were the captives at that time? The Romans. Did he free us from, his, from our captives? No, he did not. 
Is he going to free us from our captors? Yes, he is. Is the Roman Empire still here? Yes, but they're not being called a Roman Empire. When you read uh, Revelation 13, it tells you that the deadly wound being healed and behold, it came back to life. That's the Roman Empire all over again, um, which is known as America. Well, the, the empire consists of uh, not just America, but America, Canada, uh, all the, the NATO and EU nations. And most, uh, a lot of those EU nations are part of NATO. Not all of them. Uh, you, uh, Canada and the US is not, obviously not a part of the EU, but they're part of NATO. But it's one beast. That's why it's called a beast in, in Daniel 7, in Revelation, uh, and also in the book of Revelation. So, so where is he reading from? He's reading from Isaiah. Okay, let me look up the word gospel now. Yo and Gil, let me let you hear it. Strong G, 2097, Yoangelizo. Yoangelizo. It says, uh, to bring good news, to announce glad tidings, used in the OT of any kind, any kind of good news of the joyful tidings of the most high kindness, in particular of the messianic blessings. The messianic blessings mean the blessings that the Lord uh, brings or will bring. And that's to deliver us. And in, in, in NT use especially of the glad tidings of the coming kingdom of the Most High and of the salvation to be obtained in, in it through the Messiah. And what, uh, what is that, relates to, to this salvation. When you go back to Romans the ninth chapter, it says the giving of the law, the promises, the glory, the adoption, of whom is the fathers as whom as concerning the flesh, the Messiah came, which are Israel. Glad tidings, meaning good, good news, are brought to one. One has glad tidings proclaimed to him to proclaim glad tidings of good news, instruct men concerning the things that pertain to Christian salvation. Now that word Christian, the word there should be Israelite salvation. Because the Israelites were called, the apostles were called first, anti, uh, first called Christian first in Antioch. So now, what did the Lord, what book did he read from? Let's see what, uh, let's see what the Bible commentary says. Okay, so this is Google, right? Commentary. I normally go to the Bible Hub. You can go to any other commentary. And it should say the same thing. Okay, Ellicott's commentary for English readers. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The passage that follows uh, reproduces 
with a few unimportant variations. The um, Septuagint version of Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. The words to heal the brokenhearted and not in the best MSS. I don't know what that represents. Somebody help me out. To set at liberty, to set at liberty, to set someone free. Them that are bruised. Who are bruised? What is it saying in, in Matthew 11? I believe it's 11 verse. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read it. Let me come back here so I can read it. Matthew 11. This is very basic to us. Actually, this is 12 verse. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, what is the kingdom of heaven? Suffereth violence. And the violent, the Romans, take it by force. Who took, the, who took Palestine by force? The Romans. And not only us, but that whole region that makes up the, the, the Roman Empire. If you didn't submit to the Romans, you were put to death. And when you submitted, you had to pay a tax. That's why when you go to Matthew 2, it tells you how Joseph had to go before the tax collector, the census, which they had to number you in order to find out how much they're going to tax you. So he said, we'll let you keep your heritage. We'll let you keep your lands. We'll let you teach that you're Israelites. But you got to tax us. So we're not going to put you in hardcore slavery, but we're going to tax you. And that's what's happening over here in America right now. The U.S. government is not giving you work assignments. What they're doing is they're taxing you. That's another form of slavery. This is not that hard, vocab. So anyway, let's come back over here. The first scripture that's mentioned is Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 2. So let's go to it. We're going to read from 1, and we're going to read down to about 5. Isaiah uh, 61. This is, this is what the Lord opened the book to and said this prophecy has been fulfilled, meaning he was saying he was the Messiah. And he's going to deliver the sons of Israel, his people. That's why if you go to Acts uh, 1, verse 5 and 6, I believe it's the sixth verse, the uh, apostles gather around him and say, will thou at this time restore again the children, the kingdom to the children of Israel? And he says, no, this is not the time. I'm merely paraphrasing. So in order for you to return the kingdom, of, to come back with the kingdom of Israel, you have to, you have to take down the strong man, which is the Romans. Because that's what they thought was going to happen when the Messiah came. Oh, he's going to come. And they're going to take this man down. They're going to set, a, set us up in our kingdom. They thought they were going to get the kingdom over 2,000 years ago. They didn't, they didn't understand that they had to slumber and, and sleep for, over two, for, that, for about 2,000 years. You know, a little less than 2,000 years. And now the great awakening is happening. There was a great cry made, Matthew 25. So it says, let me read this. It says, the spirit, and this is the God, this is the gospel. The spirit of, of Yahweh is upon me because he had he because the Lord Yahweh hath anointed me, the Messiah, to preach good tidings unto the meek. The meek are Israelites. He shall sent he have sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, reading work what he's read, what he read in Luke. For is is word for word with with uh, Isaiah six and sixty and one sixty one and one the same, an opening of the prison to them that are bound. The Romans are not bound. It was the Israelites that were bound. But were there other nations bound? You damn right. But the Most High ain't coming for them. 
to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. Who's all that mourn? The Israelites. He's not concerned about the other nations. Three, to, to appoint unto them that mourn in, oh, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Who's in Zion? What does Zion mean? Let's look that up. Let's see what Zion means. Parch place, another name for Jerusalem, especially in the prophetic books. And Jerusalem, um, Isaiah, Isaiah 52, the city is a people before us, a place. So we are the, we are the, uh, the Zion. We are the Zion. Third verse again, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, the Israelites, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, which is the kingdom, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, because we were in heaviness under the Romans, that they might be called trees of righteousness, which is the kingdom, because the Most High is going to make all of us righteous, meaning we're not going to commit sin when he changes us. The planting of Yahweh that he might be glorified. Romans 9 says, and the glory, glor the glorification is going to come well, when the Lord was glorified, but ultimately we're going to be glorified through the Lord coming back. Four verse. And they, sh and they shall build the old waste, they shall rise up the former desolations which goes back to Amos 9, the house of David, which was in ruins, shall be built back up, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And strangers, which are other nations, starting with Esau, shall, shall stand and feed your flock, meaning they're going to be our slaves. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the sons of the aliens, other nations, shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of the Most High, because what are we going to minister to them? The law. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles or other nations, and in their glory, shall ye boast yourselves for your shame ye shall have double and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion therefore in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy which is the kingdom shall be unto them now everlasting means forever right so lahab or elder lahab said that uh, after a thousand years in the kingdom, Esau's going to come back for the last time and come up against us. No, that's, you, you air not knowing the scriptures. So I made it crystal clear to you. That's part of the gospel. Fifth verse again, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks because they're going to be slaves. And the sons of the alien, other nations, shall be your plowmen and your wine dresses. Let me look up the word plow man. Amos 9, verse 13, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that the plowman, which are the slave that's out there plowing, shall overtake the reaper. Who's the reaper? The one that reaps the benefits. 
and the treader of grapes, which are us, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. The slave man shall overtake the one that reaped the benefits. You go back to go back to slavery, you know, a hundred some odd years ago, when we worked out the field. The, the the thing that made the the slave master rich and made this country rich was the field hands. Okay, that's that's where the product came from. One one pro, main main product was was uh, cotton. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna say shalom.